All right, good morning to you again. In case you're just joining us, we've been cruising on the breakfast this morning and it's time for Off the Press. Chris K. Demwando, member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK, is joining us from Lagos this morning. Good morning to you, Chris. Good morning, Ma. How are you this morning? I'm good. How are you, sir? I am good. Okay, you're looking as nice bright as always. Thank you very much. You too. Okay, so let's just go straight into it with the Punch newspaper. FG withdraws contempt suit against labor. NLC may suspend strike. That's what they're leading with this morning. The writers there, <laughs> Solicitor General writes NLC, Falana, says FG suspends suit over Tinubu's intervention. NLC, TUC, await FG on palliative agreement call special meeting over planned strike. So it's, th this discussion continues, and um, we're still awaiting. Chris? Yes. Um, you know, the NLC uh, scheduled uh, another strike uh, if the federal government uh, refused to judge the suit, contempt suit um, against it. Don't forget that uh, the federal government went to court, back to court, to uh, to file a concept suit against uh, the the NLC for embanking on that one day protest. It wasn't a strike, as they said, mm -hmm. and they felt that it was in contempt of the uh, ruling of the uh, National Industrial Court, which uh, asked the, uh, the NLC not to embark any strike uh, after the first notice, uh, after the initial uh, increase price of uh, the petroleum products. And um, so for that, but NLC was tactical in its approach by saying that um, it's, um, it's what it, what it backed up was a protest and not a strike. Yeah, a strike would have been content uh, with the position of the court, but protest, anybody can go and protest, uh, is a fundamental human right that has shined in the 99 constitution as men. And any Nigerian has the right to go on strike. And you don't need any police permission to do that or any court permission because that has been settled at the Supreme Court, uh, the highest cost of the uh, court in the land. So, um, and that was what it was. Uh, the, feds, the federal government felt otherwise and decided to um, file a counter uh, charge against uh, not NLC, labor. As we continue to say, NLC since that is when it's labor. This point includes NLC, TUC, and other affiliate uh, groups. And for that, uh, this was done uh, the same day that um, the, the labor leaders were meeting with the president. And uh, they felt that um, it was contrary to the goodwill uh, gesture extended by labor to the president and product. So they said they are going to go on strike. Uh, or, full strike, irrespective of whatever the court, or any day they're going to court, just like you have in the Southeast, uh, yeah. where you have, um, where you have um, IPOP saying that any day that Nambi can be going to court, that it is it at then. But uh, I think uh, the federal government in wisdom has decided to draw that case. And, um, and that is uh, sure that NLC uh, on labor in the next few hours will also uh, step down on that. Why negotiation? But my worry is that till now, all the so-called palliatives that were promised by the government, all the promises that were promised by the president a few uh, days ago in his nationwide broadcast stipulation, none have been implemented so far. None. And that, not that I know. None of them. The, the uh, several, 75 billion to uh, companies, the one, uh, one million uh, naira to various individuals, and so many other things. So uh, I hope that the government will not renege. The president told us in that speech that, yes, he felt that um, the, the federal government uh, came short doing what he was to do. And I apologize to Nigeria that, yes, there were some kind of lapses here. Like but I hope that about this record, so that Nigerians can start feeling the effect of those cushion and those palliatives. And as much as I know that it did not, it did not go in any way, it did not help anything, uh, but mm. we hope that those implemented. Now that the ministerial nominees have been cleared, uh, cleared by the Senate, I hope that in the next few days, uh, the President will be able to allocate positions to on portfolios to the ministers so that everybody will be in talks. So that yes. uh, governors, true governors can now resume. 
Yes, indeed, we want to see true. We need to see true governance regime, and we also need to see that it's not just all talks, but actions, so that uh, Nigerians can breathe. Right? Yes. Nigerians can so breathe. Nigerians can breathe because <laughs> the jagged on our neck seems to. So many necks have been broken. So many people cannot breathe any longer. So no matter how so far reach or poor you are. All of us are threatened in the pains, and we feel that the only way this uh, jackboot can be removed from my neck is by making sure that government, true governance comes into play. Exactly. I've not seen any true governance since the um, since the inauguration of the president on May 29th. What we have been seeing is policy a statement um, and the parcel of certain um, economic. Uh, I don't know how to call it, but. Um, the removal of first subsidy, the Naira, uh, the valuation of the Naira, and the rest of them. Mm. But the Nigerians who ought to be feeling the impact of proposal governance and the dividends of the way pressing for now have not felt any Yes, we've time. been hearing words. We've been hearing words. The talk has been plenty. We want action. Actions that would change things and begin to change things. Now, let's look at this. Still staying with the Punch newspaper. There is this picture in front there that says, Former character commission officer admits taking bribes, indicts chairman. Uh, le let me read a bit from that, Chris. Commissioner representing Oyo State in the Federal Character Commission, Professor Olowofela Joseph, chairman of Federal Character Commission, Farida Dankaka, you know, and... Um, the secretary, Mr. Mohamed Bello, during the sitting of House of Representatives at her committee, investigating ministries, departments, and agencies, parasitals, and tertiary institutions on the mismanagement of the integrated payroll and personnel information system at the National Assembly in Abuja on Monday. So you see this woman uh, with her Quran, and you see uh, the panel sitting there. Chris, what do you know about this? Uh, sitting that took place on Monday? Yes, um, it has been on, not just Monday, it has been on for some days. And uh, basically, it's the racketeering, job racketeering that is, um, that is going on at the FCC, as we call it, with the Character Commission. And um, there were a lot of um, information, a lot of uh, uh, revelation going on how the uh, chairman of the, the commission are able to sideline a lot of his. Uh, her uh, 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 workers or fellow staffs and directors are engaged in a job racketeering and the rest of them. That now, based on petitions that uh, the National Assembly have started an investigation, and a lot of things have been unraveled. Why the woman has been, why the chairman has been defending herself in the beds? It seems that um, some of her staff are also digging in and revealing a lot. So the investigation is ongoing. Uh, but we'll see what our bets uh, may not. If you ask me, I will say that nothing will come out of it. This is not the first time um, mm. such has happened. We have several investigations by the National Assembly and other uh, committees or pro panels set up by the federal government at the federal and state level, and nothing came out of it. Remember, the, the, what will come to your mind the, the job racketeering that involved the 774,000. Minor jobs uh, for for Nigerians. Um, that is the twenty thousand naira jobs. That the was one involving uh, Festus Kiyama. Festus Kiyama, exactly. So, uh, and the investigation was carried out by the National Assembly. What happened at the end of it all? Nothing happened. Remember the what happened at NDC, NDDC. Mm. Uh, we off the mic and on the mic mm -hmm. uh, uh, the scenario. The extent that uh, one of those the principal uh, uh, persons uh, under that investigation has risen up to be has risen to become the president of the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. At the end of it all, we realized that it, we, nothing happened. Remember the uh, acting MD of NDDC then pretended to have fainted, uh, and that was the end of that. So there have been so many. So when they just come up with all this drama, I don't pay attention to. So why, 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 Chris, <laughs> Chris, let me just, well, at the risk of sounding like a, 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 a broken record, why are we on this path? You just find that these things, at the end of the day, white paper somewhere gathering dust and no actions taken. 
And then tomorrow another thing will happen and they will go into another investigation just to waste our time and money. Why are we on this path? Most of them are not. I, I don't blame the members of the legislative and uh, uh, they do their job. But yeah, I call it executive recklessness and, and rascality because mm -hmm. they, uh, the legislature don't have power of prosecution. Whatever investigation they do, they have to pass it to the executive. It's the executive that they take charge of prosecuting all those that are indicted. Um, executive includes the Nigerian police. And so if the legislators, in their wisdom, after the investigation, pass on the file to the executive for proper uh, prosecution, and the executive refused to do that. So what happened? There's nothing they can do. They cannot go to court to prosecute anybody. So the power to prosecute lies with the executive. So most that of them are not going to see that. I, and I hear what and, you're... And those being, uh, those being investigated are also part of the executive. So that is where the problem is. So until we begin to do the needful and making sure that um, those indicted and uh, are brought to book. That is how you continue to say, because they know that at the end of it, so you can do whatever investigation you want, but at the end of it, so nothing will happen. And, and that's created a lot of impunity by these people. And that is why they behave the way they do. Yeah, and Chris, I hear what you're saying. But again, I'm wondering, the legislature, part of the reasons why we have this, we have it, it established is that if you check the powers of the executive. So having... Correct me, you are the lawyer here. Um, but having done an investigation and the executive refuses to play its own part, doesn't the uh, legislative arm have the power to summon the executive to say, why have you failed to act on this? Do they not have the power to they, do that? And when they summon them and they refuse to do the natural, what else can you do? That's nothing they can do. And that is why, that is why our constitution to allow them to be excused. Look at the look at the uh, uh, yesterday during the uh, when the uh, Mr. and I mean, someone like Mr. Piamo was being uh, uh, was it now being interviewed, uh, being questioned. First of Skiyamu was summoned by the National Assembly several times to appear before it over certain allegations that led to him. In the night assembly, it, yeah, it didn't come, and. If there was a president who didn't who didn't someone ask him to come. It's before on the president. It has to do with leadership. Once the head is rotten, then the whole body is rotten. If the head of the body language of the head of the executive, who is always the president or the governors of the state, um, are not ready to look at issues of this nature, then there's nothing the legislators can do. They can only be, do their job within the ambit of the law. Beyond that, there's practical nothing that they can do. Yes, you can say, okay, you can siphon. Uh, uh, you can uh, force, uh, you can ask the uh, uh, being someone come, and if he refuses, you can now uh, uh, make sure that um, send uh, his name to the police, who will be now be forced to make sure that the person appears. But even part of the said that the police, the DSS, the uh, NSA office, the Navy, the Army, um, which other one now, all of them, including FRS, FRSC, all of them belong to the executive arm. So even if you end up saying and the, nothing is being, the executive doesn't want to, then that's, a, that, that is practically the, But this doesn't happen in, in, in other countries where we produce democracy. Mm -hmm. There is no way legislative arm in the United States where someone indicts or even um, uh, do a probe and come up with a recommendation and pass it on with the, to the executive, without the executive being anything. Look at what is happening to the to the former president of uh, of um, of US now, Donald Trump, on a daily basis is being drunk left, right, and center uh, for the uh, some of the atrocities. Not that he directly he was directly involved. Some of the atrocities based on his speeches, based on the statements which aggravated and led people to perform a certain act is being prosecuted. How many former presidents of Nigeria have been? Even in fact, even there was a time I think it was President Muhammad Bari, was someone at one point. To come and give certain uh, evidence uh, uh, and address the National Assembly. Uh, he was on the way to the National Assembly when he was not asked uh, the, the executor, whoever, either the GA, AGF, or whatever, stop him from going to the, to the executor. But the United States uh, President, and even in the UK, the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, you see them every week. Yeah, I'm sure you used to see that city mm -hmm. where the Prime Minister has to appear before the Parliament. And we may ask questions, if we answer questions, stand up. Somebody will raise an issue, you answer, you 
that is that is where um, um, the uh, where um, uh, democracy. democracy works. Mm -hmm. You know, democracy and this... works. But yeah, we don't have democracy. What we are practicing is just autocracy, as it as far as I'm concerned. And this, nothing like democracy. Yeah, Chris, and this threat of executive rascality is threatening the very existence of our democracy. And it's what's giving birth to what we're seeing springing up in the Sahara region, isn't it? Well, it is, yes, because if you look at what is that, uh, that is why we are always say we have very, very careful because uh, you see what is happening in some of our uh, uh, sub um, the West African region. In the last uh, few years now, we have four cadre states that have been removed by the military junta. And you continue to ask, something must be amiss. Yes, in as much as the military guys might be uh, ambitious in their way, but the civilians, the executive also are not helping matters. If you look at what is about to happen in Central African Republic now, and there's another one coming, mm -hmm. watch and see. The president is about to tinker with the uh, constitution of that country so that he can run for another election that will keep him for another 16 years in office. And if tomorrow the, the, the military strike, somebody in the United States or United Kingdom will start shouting, oh, uh, the democracy must be returned. When the man was thinking about changing the constitution, what did the United States, what did the United Kingdom, what and did what, And what is ECOWAS doing about such it is what is, the ECOWAS unconstitutionality? They are, not talking. they are not saying anything. This same ECOWAS, they are not saying anything. In as much as um, Central African Republic is not part of ECOWAS, but... Yes. You can also raise your voice. But still you on the continent. And say what you are doing. Yes, our president can say, no, this is to not happen. We are talking of Africa here. But they will not say anything on the other. So it is only when they, 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 they strike and you find it difficult, they start making noise. So the African leaders also must be very, very careful to make sure that they uphold the constitution, which they have sworn to, to uphold. Some of these issues that come, those are the issues that mitigate um, the, 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 the the activities of some of these military, at least, no, but I still believe that the war civilian um, system or democracy is better than the best military. But most often than not, we should also be very, very careful by what we do. With it. The fact is that these people, when they want to get elected, when they are seeking our vote, they promise you everything. They so, I have said it time and with that, that this Bible and Quran it doesn't, it doesn't strike. Let us be using Ogun and Shongo for them to swear. <laughs> You think that it doesn't work, I may mean, not it will work. No, they Maybe will they tell you, that. Chris, they will tell you, say, they don't believe in, in that country, that they can't I swear with them, things. Because that is our own. Maybe they force them. <laughs> so that they just, the thing will just try the best in the family. Okay, let's move like on. This, Bible now. This, this people are taking this Bible now and the Quran for granted. Now, because they know that there's not to happen. Let us try Shongo, Ogu, and Amadiona. By the time we start, they, start, they will not. Be, I'm telling you, you will see what will happen. <laughs> That's what I'm telling you. They know, they know what will happen, so they will tell you they don't believe in it and that they cannot swear by it. I know. All right, I moving, know. moving forward. <laughs> The two other newspapers with me, Daily Trust and The Independent, are leading with the same topic. Though couched differently, Eurobound flights diverted amidst fear of fair hike. Uh, and in, that's, that, that's Daily Trust. And Daily Independent says six aircraft minimum regulation for startup airlines cost a stare. So let's dig deeper using Daily Trust. Um, the riders there, Lagos, London, one way ticket cost. 5.6 million naira. Mali, Burkina Faso send delegation to Niger. Air France suspends flights. ECOWAS meets again Thursday. Germany threatens coupies with sanctions uh, prosecution. So the headline there is Niger airspace closure. Europe bound flights diverted amidst fear of fair hike. Chris? Yeah, um, it's, it's a fact. Uh, you know, the the Niger gendarmes have closed the, uh, the Nigerian um, airspace um, that, um, because they have this fear that there's going to be an invasion of Niger by ECOWAS led by Nigeria after the expiration of the seven day ultimatum giving the government to restore um, the civilian president. In there. And for closing that uh, what airspace, what, means, what that means is that most, most Europe bound, uh, in fact, most of the flights. Out of Nigeria and most of these things fly through. If you travel out of the country and following the roadmap on your screen, mm. you see that we think they enter through Niger. You enter into Nigeria through Niger. That is the easiest route. So if the airspace have been closed, that means that 
the airplanes have to find other routes um, to fly across, which may be far, far longer. Uh, and so that in itself becomes, that will increase the prices of, it happened in Europe uh, some time ago. Uh, and at least I, I think till now, uh, if, if some of the flights have to pass to um, Ukraine and the rest of them, because of the war going on, actually, uh, most countries of the world don't pass through Ukraine again, so that they, they will not be hit by missiles mm -hmm. and the rest of them. So we have to take some route. At the time that um, the Saudi Arabia, uh, it also happened in the Syria, during the Syrian war, um, that major war in Syria, that most flight flying through uh, towards Saudi Arabia and some other parts of um, um, that region have to uh, we have to avoid Syria um, because so that was that is what happened. In that which is why we probably say that it is not just uh, say that oh we are going to invade give the seven days but to return to return this thing or else we'll do this no the issue of deployment of military is always the last option in a diplomatic uh, engagement. Hmm. You start by negotiation, you start by the diplomacy, you start by sending. I believe that ECOWAS shot itself by the foot by issuing that seven day ultimatum. It was not, it wasn't necessary because when you do that, you have shot all doors. Of you negotiation. Have shot all mm -hmm. opportunity. Yes, yes, you've shot all room for negotiation. And when you say, and it becomes so terrible that at the end of that seven days, if you are not able to deploy military, what happens? Exactly. You've disgraced, you've disgraced yourself. Now, ECOWAS is going to miss on Thursday in Nigeria again. Don't forget that even the president of uh, the president of Nigeria cannot deploy a single soldier to war without getting the express permission of the Senate. And the Senate have met and said, we don't want to go to war. We don't, mm. We're not interested in this thing. Let us continue to negotiate. There's also the defense, uh, there's also the, in the absence of uh, the Senate, the president has been regulated by the, uh, by the constitution to also, he can get um, seek the approval of Nigerian Defense Council. I think it's Nigerian Defense Council. I can't remember the name. Now. They can also give um, approval for deployment of military to any country of or bet. Even with that, within seven days of this day, that the president must also get the approval of the Senate. What, what was saying is that we cannot even move a single troop out of Nigeria to go to any. And when we are talking about this issue of ECOWAS, we are talking of ECOWAS, ECOWAS, ECOWAS. Man, let me tell you for a fact that if ECOWAS is going to war with any country, Nigeria is going to contribute not less than 90% of that uh, of the soldiers exactly. and the resources. Exactly. You know that. Exactly. It's a fact. Exactly. It's happened with ECOWAS. We saw what happened with them all. Yeah, it was ECOWAS. But over 90% of those deployed and the resources were from Nigeria. Exactly. For, for, for in Liberia and Syria alone. How much were they people? Over ninety percent of the soldiers were that were lost at that war. We are Nigerians, so what are we talking about? So it is just oh, echo us, echo us. How many will Togo? How many will Benin contribute? How many will Ghana contribute? So we have to be very, very careful. Not even at this point in time, what we don't have the resources, and we have so much war facing us. Boko Haram, this one, this and this and that. We cannot be able to go into that. I think negotiation, the echo us, the industry should continue negotiating. You know, my guest no, yesterday. Can like what yeah. My guest yesterday just shared the same sentiment that you're sharing over this matter. Nigeria bears the brunt of it. Already, yeah, yeah already Nigerians, Nigerians are beginning to see Nigerians as the enemy, you know. Yes. And this is not a Nigeria yeah. versus Niger war. We don't have any problem with Niger. Mm -hmm. We don't have any problem with Niger. So we just have to be very, very careful. Okay, so this Eurobound flight diversion um, it's already making, it's making, uh, compounding an already bad situation. As um, you can see on Daily Independence, six aircraft minimum regulation for startups, uh, airlines causes stir. Flight tickets are already, foreign air, you know, air, tra air travels have become very, very expensive. Just yesterday, we, are, we got to know that, um, uh, uh, l let me get that figure out. Airlines. Um, have spent $4.66 billion on foreign trips. Uh, Nigerians, I beg your pardon, have spent $4.66 uh, billion on foreign trips in just 15 months. Nigerians are paying the highest in West Africa to travel from Nigeria to London. Not just Nigeria to London, Nigeria to U.S. Nigeria Even to, to Canada, Canada, Nigeria to everywhere, yeah. Yes, and to other parts of the world. Yes, is a um, is a factor of so many things. Um, there are so many factors. That one is the fact that 
The airlines are now domesticating their fares in dollars in Nigeria because of the fact that they cannot repatriate their money from Nigeria. Don't forget that some airline, even like Emirates, stopped flying to Nigeria because of that. They have so much money stocked here and they cannot be able to repatriate it. And that is giving them a problem. That is one. Second is the fact that also, despite doing that, you also find a situation where our Naira has been practically devalued. Whether we like it or not, what we are doing, what is happening is devaluation of Naira. Leave all this so-called, uh, yes, what, leave all this, uh, oh, we're closing the window, the first, the second. What is happening is Naira has been devalued. The that was the Naira very first sentiment I shared, the very yes. first question I asked. So is know. this adding yeah, value to our Naira or devaluing it? That was the first that question is, I asked from yeah, the very start. That is, you leave our economy. I'm not an economist. I'm a mere journalist. And, but from the face of things, I know that Naira is about, the fact as of yesterday, somebody was saying that Naira is up to about 900 Naira to a dollar. I don't know. I've not checked. I've not been buying dollars. But what it means that the Naira has been devalued. Now you have a value of about 830, 850 Naira to a dollar. Prior to um, 29th of May, it was hovering around 500 or 600. Now it has been devalued. So, you have to know that these efforts have increased. Now, what Nigerians, what Nigerians doing is practically going to the neighboring countries like Lume, Accra, Ghana, to book their flights and fly out. That is the second one. The third one is the economic situation in Nigeria is making it difficult for Nigerians to stay. Even, this, even the people that you expected to remain in Nigeria, professionals, mm -hmm. bankers, bank managers, I was I went to my bank the other day. I was asking for the manager, and I was told the man don't the man don't jackpa. Bank manager yep. in the bank. Yep. So if a bank manager could jackpa, then what is what will they are not another So a lot of Nigerians are not uh, have lost faith with the in the country. They have not seen any level of survival. They cannot see themselves. Now there's an increment, apart from those that are looking for legitimate means of traveling now. Some have also resorted to going to neighboring African countries to Libya. Some die on the desert. So many Nigerians are dying on the desert now, trying yeah. to find their way into Europe. So many are dying on the sea. So many Nigerians. If you see any documentary of um, boat capsizing in the European seas and rest, if you see the number of Nigerians that are involved in that, we only that with big figures. Just a few days ago, we saw four story with Nigerians that find their way under the belly of a ship. They went under the belly of that ship, and that ship sailed for two weeks till it, it battled in, in Brazil, and they came out of it almost half dead. Four Nigerian stories. They, you, can, you can Google it, the, the news of was a fluke. So that is how bad the situation. So Nigerians, Nigerians are selling their houses, house. Mm -hmm. I, meet people, I have friends that they are having legitimate means of livelihood who have sold their house just to relocate from from Nigeria. So, of course, the airlines, of course, we will we, we'll be smiling to the banks because we seem to be the, one of the highest um, people traveling out of Africa. And to even make it worse, the other these countries are making stringent um, conditions for Nigeria. Some countries have been believed, some countries like US, Canada, and the rest of them have been very liberal-minded with certain African countries, like South Africa. Most of them are native. Have, if you have a South African passport, Going to you to US now is not a problem for you. Yeah, they will give you just call it some don't even don't, some don't even need if you have Morocco, Morocco uh, passport, you don't even need a visa to go to some of these countries like US, Canada, and rest of they allow you in. But because of the condition Nigeria have found yourself, it has turned to Nigeria must go. You know, in the night it used to be Ghana must go. Mm -hmm. What we are talking now is Nigeria must go, and that is why the increase in the FA and the government doesn't seem to do anything. And added to that is the fact we don't even have enough Nigerian airlines flying to some of these countries. Because if you have Nigerian airlines flying to these countries, it reduces the, the problem. You can pay in Naira. They can domesticate it in Naira. Mm -hmm. It is only a piece that you see going to Tel Aviv, going to uh, China, going to India, going to which other country now? Most Africa. There is no other Nigerian airline that is flying, unlike other countries. So. Those are the issues we'll be looking and this, at. So and, it is, and it is regulation such as this that's making it difficult for more players to come into it. This of course it is. six it aircraft is. minimum regulation for startup it airlines. Is. It, it is, it is. So you cannot, you cannot. So you see a situation that even when um, through uh, ICAO, we have certain routes, we have routes that we, that have been given to us, 
We cannot be more satisfied. We cannot be able to meet up to those demands of where. So other countries, if you know how much Ethiopia airline is making out of Nigeria on a daily basis, so you'll be shocked. Mm. Ethiopia airline. Nigeria used to have the best and highest number of aircraft in the whole of uh, in the whole of Africa in the 70s and early 80s. Now we don't have a single one plane as a national carrier. All the countries that we have to set up their own are doing very well. Ethiopia, even Egypt, and Nigeria has now fly from here to Morocco, Morocco and spent its 18 hours sitting and waiting for a connecting flight to Europe. Mm. Is that not terrible? Is that not terrible? It's very terrible, and the controversies that surrounded the Nigerian Air Project is still yet to be uh, completely. That we, that we use billions of naira to unveil a look. You've forgotten that one. Hmm. Just oh well, Chris. <laughs> All right, so Senate clears 45 defers confirmation of El Rafai, then Lady Okotiete. Yes, We're looking uh, at Delhi yes. Independent, yeah? Yeah, 40, 45 out of the 48 ministerial uh, nominees have gotten the nod. And um, I'm sure that uh, uh, probably tomorrow at the Federal Executive Council, which was every Wednesday, the president may decide to sell them in and allocate portfolio to the 45. What I don't know is that whether we are still going to create more ministries and also uh, if we are creating more ministries and now uh, do away with the Minister of State, you know that that has been very controversial. Mm -hmm. And um, now it's most like the new ministers are going to create a There's not going to be any uh, uh, Minister of State. But the most annoying part of it is that this is going to be the most bogus um, uh, ministerial mm -hmm. uh, cabinet since 1999. And this is a president that is telling us to that we're going to cut down on cost. We are going to owe in debt. That's asked us to tighten our bet. But why asking us to tighten our bet? They are losing their own. And just, if you know the pack of office that come with these ministers, mm -hmm. the number of projects, the number of aid, the number of police, special assistants, special, special, special assistants to special assistants, special assistants to special advisors, and the rest of them, you ask yourself, what is it? This is what it, it, I remember vividly that on uh, our report talked about the uh, issue of being able to cut down on these ministries and MDAs and MDGs so that we can streamline most of this. But it's shocking that this president who pro promised um, uh, to be prudent in spending our resources have decided to name 48 ministers, the highest in the whole of Africa. Go and check out what that African countries. Mm -hmm. Ghana doesn't have, I don't think Ghana has. You might say, oh, what is the size of Ghana? Ghana doesn't have more than 20, 28 or uh, ministers. The same thing with South Africa, Egypt. I've done the mass. No Africa. In fact, the United States, go and check the United States and mm -hmm. see the number of secretary of state, secretaries that they have, which is our equivalent of a minister. Go and check the United Kingdom. I don't know what the president wants to do with 48 ministers. But the Senate have given him the approval. If they approve um, 45. The under three are being investigated, which would mean it's just a normal uh, boys' boys issue. The other, the other three will be, including Europa, will be cleared in the next few days. And he will have the 48 minister. Whether 48 or whether 100 or whether 200, whatever the president likes, it is within his prerogative to choose a minister. But the fact is that let these people start governing. Let us be seeing the dividends of democracy. Let Nigeria start feeling the effect of governance. For now, Nigerians are suffering. The cost of food is skyrocket, has skyrocketed. The, the, um, the transportation, mm, uh, education, wahala. The doctors are on strike. Everything has gone or that, you know, seems to just go uh, down, the, down the slope. And we have a president who promised us that he, he understands our uh, feelings. And I hope he truly understands our pain as it's well. Yeah, we hope so too. Chris Kandewanda, thank you so much for your time this morning on The Breakfast. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. And have a wonderful day. You too. Chris Kandewanda is a member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK and he's joined us right here in Lagos on Off the Press. We'll take a break now and come back with our first hot topic. Stay with us.